Hi, I'm Rob with Skid Steer Genius and I'm here to install a Genius Super Controller in a brand new CAT 299D series. Now the reason we're doing this is we're going to install this Etera Raptor side boom with a Cyclone mower. The machine that we have here does not have enough controls to be able to operate this mowing device. So what we're doing is we're putting the Super Controller in as well as having his controls already installed. So he's going to actually have, end up with two sets of controls in his machine. And what he's going to get out of this is he's going to get up to 10 controls. This machine only uses nine, so he'll actually have a spare, but he gets his momentary controls to be able to operate the rotation of the head, the swinging in and out of the boom, the swinging forward and back, as well as being able to turn the mower on and lock it on. The controls that he has in his cab right now would not enable him to be able to do half of the functions of this. So that's the main reason we're doing this. So what I've done in preparation of doing the installation here is I've put my boom arms up all the way. I've put the locking device in place on the other side, pinned the lock in place, and I've taken the bolts off, which are 15 16 inch bolts. I've taken these off so that I can lift the ROPS up. A lot of people don't realize this, but there's actually there's gas charge cylinders here that are going to enable me to flip the cab up and back, and that gives me access to the underside of the machine so that I can install my super controller. Okay, so we're all about safety here. I just want to make sure that you understand this is the locking device that locks the cylinder in place. So it's just in case your hydraulics happen to let go while you're working on it, this will stop it coming down all the way and crushing the person that's standing in front here. So make sure you've got this locked down. It's Normally it's up in place here, it's locked here, and we put this pin in place as well so that when it slides down, if it hits the cylinder, it won't do anything, it won't go any further down and possibly hurt somebody or kill them. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close the door here and I'm going to lift the ROPS up right here and I'm going to flip it back. I've already tried to do this by myself and it's a little too heavy for me so I'm going to get somebody else to help me just to flip it up. And all right, good. We got it up here. We want to make sure on the side that it's locked in place. There's a little safety right here. What that does is it keeps the ROPS from coming down on us when we're working inside. So if we look inside here, this is a good opportunity for us to do a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of maintenance. You'll see there's a lot of debris inside here. Uh, it's really good just to keep that clean. It keeps you from having fires. That's what a lot of, happens a lot of times to people. Uh, they get a lot of dry leaves and stuff in here and eventually something happens, they get a spark and they end up having a cab fire. So this is a good opportunity to clean this out and maintain it. Uh, we will be running our wiring and stuff through here. So that's the next step and we'll just get started. Hello. Okay, so we're just gonna go through what comes in the box, kind of run through it with you. Uh, you just need some basic tools to install this. A fish is very handy because we're going to be pulling the cable down through the boom in this case. Uh, this is a Torx T27. This is what undoes the screws inside there next to the joysticks. We have a vice grip. And we have 15 16 wrench and that was neat. that's the thing we use to open up the ROPS here. So I'll just cut the box open here. Here is you get a controller box, okay? These are your pigtails that go off to your uh, joysticks. Holding it in this direction, this is A, this is B. A is left, B is right. So when you install the joysticks, you want to make sure the joysticks that's connected to this one goes on the left side, this one goes to the right side. We've got 23 feet of wire here. It ends with a 14-pin Deutsch connector. This is the common connector that's used in all the industry including this CAT D-Series. However, this is wired to the old style Bobcat. The reason we did this is this follows all of the diagrams that Bobcat uses all the way through into using their graders. But a lot of people buy this because they want to run the grader. The only way you're going to run the grader is with this harness. We've got a pigtail on here. The pigtail, this is our power. This is our 12 volt power in. We put a cigarette lighter on the end of it with a plug. This is a common plug. You see it in a lot of different machines. You'll actually be able to plug this right into the machine in a lot of cases. In the case of this machine, it looks like probably not. Uh, so what we'll do is, is we'll use this pigtail off the, the uh, cigarette lighter and we'll chop it and we'll install that into the system. So that way, if we need to unplug this in the future, we can just unplug it. Okay. Some people just want to plug it in their cigarette lighter. They want to know or they don't want to have to look for a wire or whatever. So they'll run this up inside their cab and they'll plug this in their cigarette lighter. Okay, so that's, that's the main control. Oh, and I should point out, 
On the bottom here, we've got magnets, so it's a really, in, really easy install. Each magnet is rated for 120 pounds of pull, so we should be able to put this right up underneath the cab. We just gotta find a nice metal spot. We've got LEDs here, which give us an indication that our controls are working. It's always advisable before you do the install, we just plug it in the machine and check it. Make sure that all the lights are working, everything's working so that we don't go to the install and find that something's happened in shipping. These are all pre-tested before we ship them, but you know, things happen. Okay, I've already done that, just to shorten things up. These are our joysticks, okay. Joysticks plug directly into the controller, like so. We have uh, shrink tubing that you put over when you're done and everything's tested. You put the shrink tubing over top of it, shrink it down and that keeps it nice and watertight and also keeps it from coming loose. We have our ram mounts. You're get, we'll get to this. These are a couple different types of clamping styles we've got here. This enables us to install the, the sticks. These are our tie wraps. We've also got our dust cap. And we've got a couple different ways of mounting this. And that's something I think is really important to show. These types of mounts that we have here, they're in Kubota packages usually. This style and this style. This style is the common style used on all Bobcat machines. A lot of the Caterpillars, John Deere, anything that uses the standard faster block, it's an old style block that's got a, uh, a pressure relief on it. Okay, you'll see this on practically everything. In fact, like a lot of the Bobcat ones, they've got a doubler plate where you can install this so you can have two different ones installed at the same time. So this one works really well. Okay, that's this one. This one is the new style used on the newer faster blocks. Uh, you'll see this on the new Kubota, the 95s, okay? You can also work these together. So you can have one already installed and then put a, long, a longer set of bolts on and have both installed. So it's really easy using these two to be able to figure out something. If they don't work, we have these little green clamps. These little green clamps will go right around this connector. Like so we give you all the hardware to install them. We have magnets. You can put magnets on them and just put it on the boom. Again, these are 120 pound magnets. They can take a pretty good hit and they'll allow it to slide without damaging the connector in most cases, so that works really well. If you find a good spot that you want to permanently install them, you can drill and tap them and then have this block installed on your machine. So we've got pretty much everything covered for you to be able to install this and make it work. Okay, so I found a good location just underneath the seat here. Just gonna push this up inside here, get it up and close put it in place here. Now it's nice and firm up inside there. It's not going anywhere. I've got good location here to get to my wires. I've got my main cable coming out this side because we're gonna follow the hydraulic lines up through the boom. So this is a good location for this to come out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow all the lines up now and tie wrap it to the existing hydraulic lines up through here, up into the boom and out. So on some of the kits that we're shipping right now, we're shipping these extensions. Uh, soon we will have the longer cables in place. Uh, for those of you that don't need it, you'll just have to wind it up. For those of the, you that do need it, you won't need this extension, but in this case we will. So I'm gonna put this extension on and then uh, that'll get me enough cable to get over to my, to my right-handed stick. It turns out that the cable is just a little short. So I'm gonna put that on now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this shrink tubing over here. I'm just gonna heat it up with a just a lighter, just to shrink tube it around here and that's what holds the connection together and keeps it watertight. Okay, I actually found this little hole right here with a grommet, which is perfect for running the, my other joystick. So it turns out I won't need the extension after all, but uh, it's up in there. Uh, here's what it looks like finished. There's my box, I've got my cables going up. There's the other grommet hole here. I just put some uh, duct tape around this as a grommet because it's a little bit too big for the existing one. And that's it, all my controls are up inside the cab now. There's my main cable, I've tied it off. It comes down and goes through and routes back here. That's all tied off. All right, what I've done here is I've loosened this plate off just so I can move it out of the way. So I can pull this connector through here because I'm gonna end up routing my, my cabling through here. And I'm gonna follow these hydraulic lines up. It's gonna come back here I'm gonna hook onto these lines. You can actually see where there's the existing cable. This is the 14 pin that's already there. You can see how it goes up inside the boom. I'm gonna do the same thing and follow the, 
the same route that they've taken. So now what I've done here is I've just removed the light and just tucked it down inside here. This is gonna make it a lot easier for me to grab onto my connector and feed it up inside. Let's see, here it is right here. I'm just gonna feed it up inside here through that spot and follow the hoses. I am gonna to have to undo the bolt here and move the hoses out of the way because there's not quite enough clearance to pull the 14 pin connector through here. So that's the next thing I'm doing. Getting the uh, connector through this point right here on the back of the boom was the most difficult part. We had to undo the bolts back here and then we had to get in here with a uh, couple of pry bars to try and pry it out of the way and then push the connector through. Once we got the connector through, it was pretty much clear sailing. So we made it up the boom and we got to here. It looked like the size was perfect, but it's not. So don't do like we did. There's little tabs on this connector. Just file them off a little before you start. It'll make your life a lot easier. Just So just file the little flat part, file it flat all the way and it'll be fine. It doesn't hurt anything. They've already got a flat here to begin with. And then it'll come through here perfectly. If you don't do that, you won't get it through there. So of course we had to do it while it was in there. So learn from our mistakes. Okay, what we've done here is we've taken this cover off and just pulled it back. We undid the bolts on the side. There's a couple bolts right here. We undid those and then we pulled this cover up. We pulled our cable through here and we're just using the magnets in this case because it is kind of tight. Using the magnets allows you to move it around if you can't quite get a, a, a coupler in place. Um, and also if does, something does happen to it, it gets pulled out of the way instead of getting torn apart. So that's why, why we did it that way. Some people might want to do a permanent installation where you could take the magnets off here and you could drill and tap it through here, put a couple nuts on it or lower it down in a different place. Uh, in this situation, this is a customer's machine. We don't want to start drilling his machine apart without um, him giving us the go ahead. So we're going to leave it like this. Now here's something for you people that want that factory look at, at all costs. You want to put a little bit more work into it. We include in the kit these little balls here. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the ball right on the base of this handle. You'll see that there's a screw right here. We can remove that. We've given you about a two and a half inch screw there you can put in here. The only thing is I'm going to have to shape this on the grinder because right here, there's the way this base comes in, it's going to intrude on my ball here. So I'm just going to grind this off on one side and I'm gonna fit it into this location here. We'll see how it goes. So actually what I ended up doing was using my power bandsaw and I just took a little bit off of the one side here. I removed the screw on the side. I'm gonna put the new longer screw in here and get my measurement and then I'll chop it back so it's the right length and I'll put it back together. Here's what it looks like with the ball installed. And then I'm just gonna take this, clamp together on the joystick and I'm gonna put it on. And there it is installed, nice and clean. Okay, now I'm trying my best to show you up inside here. But here's your cigarette lighter, and the back of it's right here. I'm just gonna pop these two connectors out, and I've made some special adapters here. Um, you're gonna have to do this on your own if you want to go into this connection or splice in I'm trying to be as careful as I can because I'm working in a customer's machine myself I just splice into the wires and solder them, but um, in his case I don't want to affect any of his factory wiring, so I'm doing it this way